So, I just woke up, and I am dehydrated as fuck. I'm lying to you, I already drove to the local place and got a coffee. I guess in a lot of videos like this, this would be the part where the guy talks about what he's gonna have for breakfast, right? And like, well I'm gonna make this, and this, and then I'm gonna drink this shake and have this thing. Um, I'm just gonna have water and some coffee and uh, not eat for a while. And you know, a lot of people, especially in this context where I, I lift weights every day, people are like, what do you mean you're not gonna eat? Um, so I wanna like clarify something. Uh, I'm not necessarily lifting weights to lose weight. I'm lifting weights and then like doing kind of bodybuilding-esque workouts because I enjoy it and it, it gives me exercise every day and it helps me burn calories and it helps me retain muscle that uh, I will potentially lose during my this whole fat loss phase. But make no mistake, I am going to lose muscle and I am eating at a calorie deficit, as much of a deficit as my hunger can handle. Now what does that mean, right? Because a lot of people will hear that and think like, oh, he's starving himself. And no, 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 not by any means. Um, you need to find what works for you and do it. And I happen to be very good at fasting. I mean, now I'm very good at a lot of the aspects of dieting because I just, I have a million different things I can cook that are all low calorie, you know, low fat, high protein. Like I, I've, I've done it so much that I, I know how to control my, my hunger. I know how to control my cravings. I haven't had pizza for almost two months and it's like my life food. It's like what gives me life. I've cut it up for two months. Sure, I have cravings for it here and there, but I'm very good at ignoring them. But another thing I'm really good at is fasting. I don't get hungry for like the first half of the day. Sometimes I'll be working and I'll forget to eat by like 4 p.m. And then I won't even be hungry until I realize that I've forgotten to eat. And I don't know, a lot of people will hear that and be like, that's not good, man. That's how you develop an eating disorder. And it's like, well, that's not true, right? Because if anyone is that guy at 4 p.m. who's forgotten to eat, if you slap a pizza in front of him and you go eat this, he will eat the whole pizza. And, and he is me in this scenario. Right, so it's not like I'm, I'm purposely starving myself, but if you're good at not eating for a while, if you're good at fasting for the first half of the day, then that's a way to reduce your calorie intake. And any way to reduce your calorie intake is good because that's the whole name of the game when it comes to dieting. And people who say, well, you gotta eat throughout the day, breakfast and then lunch and then a little snack and then dinner and you just gotta eat lower calorie portion. It's like, dude, if you don't, binge eat back all the calories that you would have eaten during your fast, then just don't eat for a while. And I don't even care about like intermittent fasting where you like put yourself on a timer and you're like, okay, from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. that's my feeding window. And it's like, I'm not even necessarily saying that. It doesn't need to be that rigid or complicated. Just track your macros and do what you're good at. If you're really bad at fasting, if you get hungry in the morning, a lot, like you wake up in the morning ravenous and you're really hungry, then you're probably the opposite of me. You eat for the first half of the day and then as the day peters out, maybe you get less and less hungry. So maybe towards the second half of the day, you just kind of stop eating or maybe at night you have like a Diet Coke or something like that to kind of satiate you a little bit. Or like a healthy snack, maybe just fry up some egg whites with some cheese, throw it on a piece of toasted bread and you know, have that be your dinner. Because if I were to eat breakfast this morning, that's probably what I would have. A couple egg whites, egg, fry it up with some salt and pepper, throw it on a piece of toast, done deal. But I'm probably not going to do that because I didn't wake up particularly hungry this morning. And I'm not going to view it as a bad thing that I'm just not going to eat till like 2 or 3 p.m. It's fine. I'm not going to, I'm not going to shrivel away. I'm not going to starve myself. I'm not going to get hungry at 1 p.m. and be like, oh, it's not 3 yet. I can't eat. Like, no, I'm just going to. Wait till I'm hungry to eat. I don't know. It, people seem to overcomplicate this shit. If you don't get hungry till 2 p.m., don't force yourself to eat before 2 p.m. If 2 p.m. hits and you're like, yeah, I'm a little hungry, but I think I could go a little longer without eating, then do that. That's a way to not eat calories. As long as you don't binge and eat a shit ton of calories when you get hungry, finally, towards you know the second half of the day, as long as you don't do that and you, you understand that, like, okay, now this is the point where I have to eat, but still keep it to like a regular diet meal, maybe like a 400 calorie sandwich or something like that, and try to keep your meals kind of close to gym time. I don't know, I see no problem with it. At the end of the day, this shit's calories in, calories out. That's what it is, there's nothing, there's no magic to it. Just 
exercise every day, eat less, then you burn. That's a, you know, rant over. I, last time I made one of these, I was at 262, I believe, or 261, something like that. Uh, it's been a little bit since I've made one, and I'm now at 252. Uh, so I've, I've lost quite a bit of weight. Um, today uh, I'm going to do arms. Um, and uh, believe it or not, since I made the last video, I've actually stopped doing morning cardio because I noticed that I was getting a little softer muscle-wise and I, I had less energy throughout the day and at the gym because the cardio every morning was increasing my overall, I guess, systemic fatigue. Um, so with the cardio and the training and the calorie deficit, it was really tough to keep both of them up and I had to either give up the training or the cardio. Uh, and I decided to give up the cardio and believe it or not, once I gave up the cardio, I saw no difference in the speed at which I was losing weight. However, recently, over the past like three or four days, I've stagnated. I've been at about 252, 251.8, 253, and just kind of hovering around those three numbers for like three or four days now. I don't think it's time to hit the alarm button yet. Uh, I'm going to give it a few more days, just keep weight training and eating the way that I am and see if the weight kind of starts to dip down a little bit more. Weight loss stagnates after the initial couple of weeks because what happens is you're actually just kind of pulling all of the extra water out from like in your muscles and, and you're, you're, you know, it's, it's what they call, um, it's like the opposite of noob gains, you know, like at the beginning your weight loss is going to be quicker and then it's going to stagnate and that's when the dieting gets really tough because now you're not losing two or three pounds a week. You, you're losing like a half a pound a week and you have to eat like you're on a diet every day. So this is the point where a lot of people start getting a little discouraged, but um, the science exists for a reason. You know, the plan exists for a reason. I guess what, trust the process, they say, right? If I keep eating at a deficit and I keep working out, I'm gonna lose weight. Even if I look at the scale and the number doesn't change for four or five days for some odd reason, I'm not going to be like, well, that's it, I give up, I'm gonna go get pizza. Like, no, I'm, ju I'm just gonna keep doing this for as long as I said I'm going to do this. And that is until I hit the certain weight that I wanna hit. So um, that being said, uh, I'm considering doing morning cardio. I don't know if I'm gonna. I'm thinking about it, I'm kind of back and forth on it, but I have a lot of work to do, so I'm like iffy on it. I think I'm gonna keep not doing cardio just to kind of see what, what effect it has on the weight loss and if I can inch down past that 252 that I seem to be stuck at without doing cardio. And if a couple more days pass and I still haven't gotten past that, then I'm going to go back to doing the 30 minutes of cardio a day because maybe that's what's going to help push me over the edge. Again, not eating breakfast, no calories to track. I'm probably going to end up eating my first meal at around like, I want to say two-ish o'clock. I might force myself to have something at like 12.30 and then something again at like 2 o'clock because I plan on lifting at around like 3 o'clock and I do want to kind of be carved up and, and fed for the lift so that I have energy for it. So maybe that's what I'll do. So the next time you see me recording, I'm probably going to be prepping a meal in here and then the time after that, I'm probably going to be prepping another meal and then the time after that, I'm going to be heading over to the gym where I may or may not record myself, but probably not because I'm going to a retro fitness today and I don't even like recording myself in my own apartment, so I, I'm not recording myself at a gym. I've decided I am going to make myself a little something. It's a little after 1 o'clock. I plan on heading out to my workout at around 3 o'clock, so I'm going to eat something here and then maybe eat one more time before the workout. This is mostly going to be egg whites with fat-free cheese. I'm going to do one serving of this, probably four servings of this, and then I'm going to allow myself one whole egg. Mix all that together and eat it over a piece of toast. Season the crap out of it. Good deal. Now, before I start weighing anything, cooking anything, doing any of that kind of stuff, I take everything that I know I'm going to eat and I just plug it into the macro tracker in advance. So I'm going to have one egg, five servings of the egg whites, one serving of the mozzarella, and one slice of bread to eat it all on. That's going to be 255 calories, 43 grams of protein, 7.2 carbs, 5.5 grams of fat. It's a pretty fucking solid first meal of the day. I'll probably eat one more time before I go to the gym, so let's weigh this shit out and cook it. And just super quick, uh, I'm not going to film myself weighing the food every time, but I like to grab these. A uh, bunch of Tupperware, little Tupperware containers from whatever store is near you. Uh, and then 
if I'm making something like this, I'll just grab as many as uh, different things I know I need to weigh out. So for example, I don't need to weigh out an egg, I just put one egg in as the serving. I don't need to weigh out the bread, I just put one slice in as the serving. I'm gonna need to weigh out the egg whites, 210 grams of them to be exact, so I'm gonna weigh them out in here. And then I'm gonna weigh out 28 grams of the fat-free mozzarella cheese, which is, in my opinion, the best fat-free cheese you could ever get. Gonna weigh the cheese out in here. Gonna weigh those both out, and then just cook everything up and eat it. I like to put stuff away as I finish weighing it and portioning it out because honestly it just makes cleanup at the end much easier. And uh, I am a bread in the fridge kind of guy. I started putting my bread in the fridge and I have not had a loaf grow any mold for ever. Don't forget the zero calorie cooking spray. Shit's important. Shit's really important. And don't forget all your seasonings. Again, you gotta make this shit taste good, okay? This is all I'm gonna need. Heat's medium low. I'm gonna spray in a, a zigzag pattern onto the pan. What the fuck? A zigzag pattern. A zigzag pattern onto the pan to get it nice and coated. I turn it this way because if you turn the spray down this way, it kind of gets everywhere. It turns into more of a mist rather than a stream. Just let this heat up. Now, if I want to later, I can actually add some grilled chicken to something like this and make it really protein heavy. Grilled chicken egg white omelets, if you season them well and put a little bit of non-fat cheese on them, literally cheating. Not diet cheating, weight loss cheating. It's almost unfair how good the macros on a it's almost unfair how good the macros on a grilled chicken egg white omelet are. If you don't really care about what you're eating and you just want to lose weight and you'll eat whatever you've got to eat, just eat those every day. You're gonna look like fucking Jason Mimosa. I don't know if the camera caught that, but my stomach is growling. I'm just gonna kind of go around the edge of the pan, bring the cooked bits into the center, and then you'll notice more and more starts to cook more and more quickly as the pan heats up. You gotta scrape the bottom too, make sure you're getting those cooked bits. Then eventually, you start pulling all the cooked stuff to one side. I like to tilt the pan a little bit so that all the liquid flows to the side that doesn't have the cooked bits. And you just kind of separate the cooked from the uncooked as it, well, cooks. Honestly, you can add the cheese at any point in this process. I'm just going to add it once everything is a little solidified. Bring the cooked stuff over here. Let the liquid go cook over here. If it feels like the pan's getting too hot, you can turn the heat down a little bit. I have it on basically low at this point, but the pan feels pretty hot. And look at how quickly everything comes together like that. Then of course, you know, all the stuff sitting on top here isn't really super cooked. So you can just kind of use your spatula to flip it over. Now this is the point where I like to season. I don't season my eggs or chicken or stuff like that before I cook it. I season it after. I think salting eggs at the table is a, is a good practice. I think it, it yields the most uh, results. Now I know it looks like I'm putting a lot of seasoning on this and uh, that's because I am. And then lastly, our lovely, lovely cheese. And that's just gonna kind of melt on top of everything. All right, I'm moving this onto the plate. Now this pan's really hot, so I'm gonna turn the heat off completely and reapply the zero calorie cooking spray. This is, uh, I get this from Wegmans, it's like a zero calorie organic olive oil spray. Um, it's really good. I don't know what you guys have, but I recommend looking into your, your local store and getting just a really good spray. I'm gonna turn the heat back on medium low, move the bread around the pan for full coverage with the spray and really just let it, let it toast. Now I'm gonna pick up the bread, reapply just a little bit of the spray, flip it back down on top, move it around a little bit, full coverage, and look at how nice and golden that is. Now I know what you're thinking at this point. Your hair's greasy, you look like shit, you look like you just woke up, what's going on with that? Those are things that you can almost always say about me reliably and, and they will be true. But it's Sunday, oh fuck. I know I'm going for a crazy hard workout later, I don't want to really shower before it because I'm not, I'm not that bad, but yeah. Gonna get this down, probably eat one more time before I go for the workout, and then uh, after the workout, get a protein shake in, have a nice protein filled dinner, hit easily over 200 grams of protein, probably stay in the uh, 1300 calorie range, and yeah, I'm gonna make some coffee, uh, and get some more work done. See you guys in 
a second for you and a couple hours for me. So, just did crazy arm workout. I don't have much of a pump left. I didn't have much of a pump in the first place. Well, not that I didn't have a pump, but you know, I'm still so fat that it's kind of hard to see any kind of a pump, but uh in the gym I was looking. I was looking pretty good. I was looking at myself in the mirror a little bit. Um and now I have to hope that <laughs> I have enough charge in my car, I just showered, uh, that I have enough charge in my car to get to a store called Final Turn Gaming in Clifton, where I am going to go play card games because yes, I am still a fucking nerd, uh, but I'm not a virgin anymore. I did meet a nice young man, no, I'm kidding. Um, something just slid, and I don't know if it was my camera or my backpack, but I hope it wasn't my camera. This is not fastened at all. Someone pulls out in front of me, you guys are going flying. I just worked out and still the only thing I've eaten is the, that uh, egg white toast, fat-free mozzarella combination that I did. So, um, you know, the anabolic window, for those of you who don't know what it is, is um, basically, simply put, the anabolic window is something that I don't understand. Uh, but I'm, I, I, it's good to drink this right after you work out. I don't know, man. I just listen to scientists and I, I do what I'm told. So I've got 51% battery life. I know you're thinking like, oh, that's a lot of fucking battery. What do you mean you might not make it? This place is pretty far. And, uh, you know, when you're on the highway and you've got a bit of a lead foot, that battery tends to go down real quick. That's all I'm saying. Electric cars are not slow. They are fast and if you like to go fast and I'm a short you know Italian guy that lives in Jersey and is very very insecure I'm gonna drive pretty fast and that battery is gonna go so uh, you know if I stall out might make the video pretty fun but all in all really great workout um, I'm finally you know I've been going to the gym back like every day a little over a month now and I'm really starting to notice I look in the mirror and I'm like damn I'm really starting to look you know a little jacked again not jacked in the sense that like I'm shredded or, or like really super strong looking but I'm getting big again and I'm getting shape so when I'm wearing a shirt that's like a little too big on me and it's kind of baggy you can still see my my giant ass shoulders through the shirt uh, if I've got a pump and with my arms it's like okay I have a big baggy shirt on so you can't really see them, but then I start doing like a tricep push down or a bicep curl and all of a sudden, you know, as I, as the, the sleeve lifts, it reveals something that definitely isn't small. <laughs> it's not, you know, perfectly shaped or huge or ripped yet, but it's not, it ain't average. It's not a small arm. Making good progress with that. Uh, again. With the shake and the egg whites and the toast, my calorie count is right about here. Um, it's not really where I want it to be at this point. I, I really wish I could have eaten a little bit more, but things got in the way, and there's more time to eat. I don't really eat out, though, and I'm going to be pretty far from home for the rest of the day, so we're not really eating another real meal until we get back, get back to the house and get cooking. Hopefully I can show you guys some pretty cool stuff. There's a chance, though, that my girlfriend is going to cook dinner tonight for me. Um, and I don't want to be like, babe, don't cook dinner because I'm filming a video. So there's a chance that maybe tomorrow I'll just eat exactly how I ate today and then film tomorrow's dinner and splice it into this video, you know, so that it's it's fair and it makes sense for the, uh, for the calorie counting bit. But we'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm not super concerned with it. The main thing is, you know, we got we got the lift going. All right, I'm, I'm done yapping. I'll see you guys later. So I've got good news and bad news. Uh, full disclosure, it's the next day. I got a little too busy yesterday. Didn't get a chance to film dinner. People in the apartment, it just... It wasn't happening. The good news is I figured the lapel mic thing out. So now the audio for the rest of these videos is going to be way, way better. In fact, I'm probably going to have to balance it because looking at the channels on the camera, it looks like it's probably pretty loud. I figured the whole receivers thing out. I was just, I was using a couple of the wrong wires in the wrong ways. And I was using the transmitter where the receiver should be and the receiver where the transmitter should be. So anyway, 
I fixed it, figured it out. And now I'm going to recreate exactly what I had for dinner last night so that you guys can see it as a part of this video. I'm gonna plug the macros from what I'm about to cook into yesterday's and it's all, it's all gonna even out. If, if you get what I'm saying, it makes sense. Guys, I have something I have to admit. I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a glizzy gladiator. Parents used to call me a wiener warrior. I'm a bit of a hot dog hound. I fucking love hot dogs. And I've been trying to get them to fit into my diet. I found these organic turkey dogs. Uh, it's 60 calories per hot dog. They taste great, super fast to, to fry up in a pan. Uh, so usually for like a pre-workout snack, I'll take two of those, fry them up in a pan, and then I'll toast like a low calorie, high fiber, like, like a healthy, good low calorie bun. Throw the glizzies on the bun, a little bit of mustard, get that down, and then just have like some plain chicken with it. Maybe some like buffalo sauce on it, seasoned and whatnot. In fact, that's what I'm about to do. So let's do it. Pan, scale, Tupperware, buns, glizzies. <laughs> now I can't emphasize this enough. If you have a store near you that sells something like this, like a pre-cooked like sous vide chicken that's super plain with nothing on it, oh my God, buy as much as you can. This, this chicken right here has made dieting so much easier and I'm gonna show you how. I am gonna get 60 grams of protein out of this pre-workout meal. It is not going to be more than 400 calories. In fact, I think it comes in at a little under that and I get to have hot dogs, mustard, bun, chicken, buffalo sauce, oh my God, ridiculous. You know I keep that thing on me. Glizzies don't need much. I don't know how many more of these I'm gonna get. They're really good, and uh, I mean, the, the macros aren't the best, but they're also not the worst. I mean, it's 60 calories per hot dog. It's not that bad. And they taste really good, and they make a great pre-workout snack because of all the carbs I get from using the bun. But that being said, in terms of like comparing this to chicken, it's not the best. I have to eat a lot of chicken just plain without bread or cheese or anything in order to make up for eating these in the same meal. So what I've essentially done is figured out that five ounces of this chicken makes up for the lack of protein in these and the bun. The bun and these two glizzies is about 15 grams of protein. Measuring out five ounces of this gives me right around 45 grams of protein, enabling me to hit that 60 that I want to hit. This is 120 calories right here, 90 right here, which makes it 210. And then the chicken is going to add another about 170. So basically, it's going into the tracker as 400 calories, 60 grams of protein, uh, the carbs, everything's gonna be right here. Now I just gotta cook it up. Okay, so clearly, pan is really hot, glizzies are done smoking, so. I'm just gonna dump them into the bowl. I try to be efficient with like my dishes and everything, so I'm gonna use this bowl for everything and you'll see what I mean. So the heat's off, but the pan is still super hot as you can see, so I'm just gonna go ahead and throw the bun in there. Guys, whether you're eating a burger, a sandwich, a, like a press sandwich, a, a, a hot dog, toast your fucking bun. Do me a favor, toast your fucking bun. What are you doing not toasting your bun? What the fuck is wrong with you? I've measured out five ounces of the sous vide chicken and I'm gonna toss it in the pan after the bun. I'll eat the glizzies while the chicken is cooking, season the chicken, toss it around a little bit, let this digest a tad, slam the pre-workout and well, go do the lift, even though you're not gonna see any more after this because this is supposed to be my dinner from yesterday. Ash, you, you're a good kid. You don't have to toast it much, just a little bit. Get the glizzies in there. You gotta have a little bit of musty. And let's turn this heat back on medium low. Again, I'm using a big burner, so I don't need a ton of heat. Dump that chicken in there. Now, I weighed out the chicken in this, but it's gonna have another use. Now, normally I go crazy with the seasoning, but with this, I'm just gonna use a little bit of a uh, carving house Tacticalories, Carving House, Carnivore Seasoning. No sponsor, uh, I'm not big enough for that yet, but hey, Tacticalories, if you wanna <laughs> get in contact if this channel takes off, I fucking love your product. My pantry is full of it. And yeah, I'm being generous as fuck because again, this is plain fucking sous vide chicken. You want it to taste like something. And we're good at multitasking here. Have you guys been doing your homework? How many calories are in mustard? Did you watch the last video? It's zero. Oh, isn't this like a white supremacist thing now? I probably shouldn't do this. Mm -mm. It pays to be a wiener warrior. It pays to be a hot dog hound sometimes. When meat has been sous vide, it's cooked, but it has no Maillard on it. The Maillard reaction is what occurs when you get that little caramelization on the outside of like a steak, for example. So like with a steak, what you want to do is sous vide it till it's cooked take it out of the sous vide bag and then sear it in a pan for like a couple minutes on each side, maybe a minute each side to get that nice Maillard caramelization and then you eat it. 
this is fully cooked. It's been sous vide, it's ready to go. I could have just eaten it cold. But this is serving two purposes, giving it a little extra flavor, letting the seasoning really kind of cook and come out of its shell. And it's getting a little bit of a crisp on there, a little bit of a Maillard reaction. It's gonna make the chicken taste better for no extra calories. That's the takeaway. Okay, I'd say this is about ready. Now I'm gonna pour it back into the Tupperware that I used to measure it out. And while it's piping hot, grab the off-screen buffalo sauce, which again, you doing your homework? How many calories are in this? Zero. And if you like hot sauce, and I sure do, it makes dieting a lot more easy and a lot more fun. Ah, multiple uses for one piece of Tupperware. Weighing out the chicken in it, and then, buffaloing the chicken in it, I guess. And remember, I said I'm using one bowl for everything, so I'm gonna eat this. This will be cooled off enough to eat, pour it into the bowl, eat it with a fork. Good to go. You guys wanna, you guys wanna peep the, this is 170 calories of chicken, by the way. Peep the buffalo chicken that I'm gonna get down. Look at that. That shit looks good, doesn't it? I mean, does it look fucking gourmet? No, but like, damn, throw that on a, throw that on a slice of pizza. Now we're talking. So before I down this and uh, get some pre-workout and go to the post office and go to the gym and do all that, if I may, I wanted to speak rather candidly. So for the last four to five days, um, I went from 151.8 at my lightest, and then today I weighed in at 153.8. So that's a, that's a two pound fluctuation in the upward motion. It's an increase in weight. And I think a version of me a few years ago, you know, or even like maybe some of the people watching would experience that fluctuation and go like, what the fuck am I doing wrong? Like what's going on? Why am I not losing weight? I'm measuring everything I'm eating. I'm at a deficit. I work out seven days a week. It's, and it's, it's very easy to get into your head and be like, well, dieting isn't for me. Something has to be wrong with me. My thyroid's bad, my metabolism is bad. Like, it's so easy to start dreaming up things that aren't true. So what I did was, uh, I felt a little bit of that in me. And I stepped back and I said, okay, what could actually be the culprit here? Let me think. Muscle weighs more than fat. And for the last five days, I've been really sore. Chest, shoulders, legs, back, training them every day. And I'm probably still getting noob gains. If you guys don't, want, don't know what noob gains are, basically, when you first start working out, your muscles are much more conducive to grow quickly. After you've been working out for a while, putting on like a pound of muscle is a huge deal and it takes a really, 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 really long time. When you first start working out, especially if you've been jacked in the past and you haven't worked out for a few years, you are going to get what is called noob gains, which is when you almost immediately gain like five pounds of muscle. I am sore. I'm pushing myself in the gym. I'm lifting heavier and heavier weight week over week. I'm eating protein to recover those muscles. And then I step on the scale and I'm a little bit heavier. After losing 10 pounds of what I would assume to be body fat in my first month of dieting. So I could look at it two ways. I can go, I'm eating at a deficit. I've been eating at a deficit for four days, hitting the gym hard, and I've gained three pounds. What the fuck? Or I can look at it like this. I look in the mirror, I go, damn, I'm starting to see a difference. My hands look thinner, my face looks a little bit thinner, and I feel better. My muscles have been sore, and I've been eating a lot of protein, and they're getting less sore, which means they're growing, and muscle weighs more than fat. And on top of that, my noob losses are probably just about done. So what has happened is that big chunk of weight that you lose very quickly in the beginning of a diet, that's over. I'm not losing weight as quickly anymore, but I'm still in my noob gain phase. I'm still getting a lot of muscle because I'm lifting heavy at the gym and I go like seven days a week. You can very easily trick yourself into believing that the process doesn't work, that weighing your food doesn't work, that going to the gym doesn't work. We're humans. We're great at dreaming up all sorts of excuses and all sorts of scenarios to justify something that we see that doesn't make immediate sense. What I would say to you, if you hit this point in your diet, is just keep going. Maybe don't weigh yourself for a while. Go for another month. Eat at a deficit, weigh your food, go to the gym, don't weigh yourself for a month, and wait to see how insane the results are. I gained 
two, three pounds over the last week. If I don't weigh myself for a month and I continue to eat like I've been showing you guys for a month, keep drinking to a minimum, really shouldn't be drinking at all, and work out as hard as I can as often as I can. There is literally not a chance that a month from now, when I weigh myself again, I'll be heavier than I am now. It's just not scientifically possible. And sometimes you have to have that chat with yourself. With that being said, for me, this is kind of the start of my day. I'm gonna head to the gym pretty soon and get some errands done. For you, this is the end of this video. Thanks for watching.